Hello, everybody, and that was the weather update. I hope that you listened keenly and you're now able to make your plans for the day. Again, the sun was taking a bit long to come out this morning. It's a bit challenging for those that are having a hard time getting out of bed. Nevertheless, we're here to get ready with everything we have planned. Ren, time for our couch talk? Yes, time for our couch talk. So there's a lot happening, but first let me just ask you, how are you doing today, Kev? Let's do a mental health check. Let's we have not, not done nothing. <laughs> we have not done in a while, <laughs> indeed. Um, I'm good. I'm very excited about today. Uh, I, I'm a bit, you know, wondering what's going on right now. But uh, given the pressure of, you know, everything, I feel it just makes it exciting to, to be here and deliver a good show. How about you? I'm good. I just anticipating our segments, you know, I am in like a positive mentality that it's going to be an amazing Wellness Wednesday because apparently you told me I said Friday. You said Wellness Friday. I'm like, oh, I didn't mean to say that, but yes. So it for happens. all our viewers, we just really appreciate all your viewership for always sticking with us when we have, we're working on our little kinks. We truly appreciate you. Honestly, you make the show possible and we're thankful. But moving right along. So yes. yesterday we were talking about the borders reopening. We did a synopsis of, you know, what to really expect and also what's happening on the Guatemala side as compared to the Mexico, Mexico side when it comes to testing and so forth, the procedures more or less. So the update is yeah. really the idea and the thing that we didn't really want to talk, they didn't really want to touch base on, but they, we have to what's at some that? point is the fact that with borders reopening, that means we can expect an increase in cases, point blank. How much that increase will be? Will it be a spike? We're not saying that's going to happen. However, think of it like anything else. When it was Christmas time, you know people were coming in, you know you're going to meet family. Whether you like it or not, there's going to be some kind of interaction with the public. And so now as we look at the borders reopening, we can expect the same thing because now there's a new way in which people can interact and increase that face-to-face -face contact with somebody else with the borders reopening. So you yep. can't expect cases to rise. Right, so in the interview conducted with Dr. Uh, Manzanero yesterday, Russell Manzanero, just, just gonna to say be, you gotta just say to that be clear about that, um, <laughs> he shared that, as, as you rightly mentioned, with the interaction that's going to increase, we can expect an increase in number of COVID cases. However, he reiterated the importance of maintaining our COVID protocols, COVID prevention protocols, which would be wearing your face mask, sanitizing at every point where you can. So make sure you travel with your hand sanitizer and wash your hand wherever it's possible. Um, also maintain your physical distance with whoever you're going to go visit or wherever you're going to go interacting. I saw there was a lot of people going already to the mall, going to McDonald's, going to the taco stands. So make sure that you're maintaining your physical distance. But one thing that he also mentioned, which is very important is for us to ensure that we're living a healthy lifestyle. Yeah. He's saying that there, there was, there was a, a, like an observation that there has been an increase in hospitalization cases. And when they were asked why that is so, he said it is believed that it has had a lot to do with the chronic diseases that people have. So with that, he said, as, as much as you're doing all these physical measures to prevent COVID, you have to ensure that you are taking care of your, of your health. So if you know you're a diabetic person, if you're hypertensive, you have cholesterol problems, to ensure that you're, in, you're monitoring that, taking your medications to control those chronic diseases, to work to keep your immune system healthy, to prevent yourself from getting infected with COVID. So that's very, very okay. important. So have that in mind as you're going to go travel to... To, to Mexico or Guatemala. Ren, I was quite amazed to see a lot of people literally just waiting for Monday to go there. I am like, wow. Because we mentioned this before, <laughs> it's the idea of going back into normal states, idea of just having the chance that you can travel because we did not have that option before. So people are just going to jump at the fact that, you know, even if I had us to go for go by, Wali, Churro, it was and go that. get a Literally, mom or it something, was that. it's just <laughs> really the idea of I can do it now because I couldn't for so long. Oh, man. I so have... I, could, I feel for them and I understand that. I just like, just like um, Dr. Mantanera said, it just has to be a little bit mindful, be cautious. Mm. Nothing is wrong with having some fun, but have very cautious fun too as well because you have other loved ones to go home to and you don't want to bring COVID there to them. Yeah, So let's definitely. just be mindful and it can be costly as well if you go and contract that when you're at the borders. We already know the whole ring my dig when it comes to that. <laughs> Mm. There you use that word. I keep it? using it. Like, I'm using these Creole words. I'm just, like, making sure we just dash in because I want people to remember these stuff. And 
incorporate it in your common day language too as well. We don't just have to wait for when we teach you our word. When a teacher, continue with it, guys. You yes, know? <laughs> and do like me, having a hard time reading Creole, which is, which is very interesting. I love it's it. It's a learning. It's process a learning for process you, indeed. And I'm happy yeah. to be there with you. But there you go. As we move right on in our couch talk, let's talk about just a small incident that took place um, as recently at the UDP headquarters, where it was suspected that a very, um, very loyal. Um, a passionate and invested supporter of Tracy passionate, Panton. Yeah, very, I love the way how you describe Kevin, love it for you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so it was reported that that supporter came in, looked at um, Beverly Williams, second deputy Be Beverly Williams' picture, and said, well, not said anything, but just probably looked at it and was like, you know what, this probably needs to go dog or something. So took it dog and threw it in the garbage. Yeah. And that was a big thing in the sense that, you know, just saying, um, what's happening here with that idea because you know Honorable Tracy Tager Pant and she stands for women empowerment So to have a supporter do something of that magnitude, you know causes people to wonder what's going on in that realm Yeah, yeah, that's true because it's her big supporter that yeah. went ahead well alleged went ahead and, and, and did that um, Grab the picture and throw it in the garbage kind of thing and the conversation also went about you know How does it speak about women's empowerment? Yeah. So there has been no comments made uh, from behalf of Honorable Tracy Taker Panton. We're, we're seeing if that's going to come up today. And not either mm -hmm. for um, the second deputy either. There's no comments at all. I, so it's just it's, her sister was the one that really did the kind of comment. But it's just interesting to see. But what I can say too as well, and I'm not justifying anything, a lot of times, and I've, I've watched this for many, many, many instances, you can probably stand for something, but not everybody that supports you stand for that exact same thing. And so there's always that discrepancy in like, you're you know, living for this, this is your message, but just because you live for a message does not mean everybody is living with you, honey boo boo. Right. So that is something to always to think about too. You're mm -hmm. always gonna have that, but definitely you are supposed to try to keep the people that are supporting you very accountable and on the same page as you as a leader too as well. So there's two sides to look at it. That is the thing, keeping your supporters accountable and being, okay, this is what I stand for. Yeah, and then make it, make it your business to let them know, hey, what you did was obviously not right. But again, we're going to wait and see if there is any official statement coming up from these two um, members of the UDP party. So let's see what happens there. And on that st same red flow and everything that's coming along, but positive news we have here, if anyone's been following Honorable Shine Barrow and what he's been doing on the scene, we definitely have some great news that he's going to be on the Wendy show, you know, with Fat Joe as well. I know Fat Joe has really been supporting DJ Khaled. All of them have been really mm -hmm. supporting him. And so he's going to be talking about, if I'm not believe, um, it's going to be... So he said they're going to be discussing Belize, tourism, criminal justice reform, music, and his journey from a Grammy Award rapper to the next Prime Minister of Belize. That's called... I, one thing I got to say is the law of attraction is a thing. And the Honorable Shine Barrow has been putting it out there. Yeah. In every opportunity he has, he's like, I'm going to be an ex-Prime Minister of Belize. So He's like, put my word on that. Put, put my word name on that. Yes. That's what's happening. Put right. Black, so period. If anybody wants to see that interview, is going to happen today at 10 in the morning on the Wendy Show. So it's something that you do not want to miss. It's going to be interesting to hear their different perspective, you know, what he brings about the table. And of course, his colleagues, what they think about and how they can support um, development in Belize. Because as you rightly said, we've been seeing that his connections are actually manifesting in, in, yeah. in good things. I mean, look at Stig. Look at being Stig. Have, have that song, you know? Mm -hmm. and With DJ with Khaled. Khaled. And um, Davido, all of these things, like, these are opportunities not necessarily always presented for Belizeans. And so I always like when we're in the spotlight in a positive manner. And so people are looking and people are seeing what we're doing and people want to know more. And yeah. that's what builds the conversation to start build the investments and build also, you know, just coming to our country. So. Right. And you know, and that was one of and that was one of the reasons why the caucus for change endorsed the Honorable Shine Barrow as leader of the opposition, because they said that he comes with a wide network of opportunities. Yeah. So clearly we can see that um, here in this in this conversation is going to be having today on the Wendy show. So stay tuned for that. And Ren, one of the things also on this red wave 
if our um, colleagues on the on the room can put that video before we introduce this conversation. Oh my gosh, make sure you beep out certain two words. There are two words <laughs> that were a little bit It is hilarious. This is a statement there. from the uh, Honorable Ugo Pat, who's the current um, leader of the party. So let's hear his statement as at the House of Representatives. And just to put in context before the video plays, let's think about inflation and what you're willing and not willing to pay for and how you would love to have things just slashed up in two, four pieces and so forth when it comes to inflation. All right, so are we ready with that? We have that video for you. That if you could crack an egg, uh, people we can't hear the audio, out, guys. We can't hear, but possibly people arguing. literally would buy the egg in, in, in pieces instead of having to buy the egg um, on that. If you could crack an egg people into half or into four pieces, people literally would buy the egg in, in, in pieces instead of having to buy the egg um, on that. If you could. <laughs> <laughs> What did he say, Red? You can basically crack an egg in half or into four pieces, and people will literally buy the egg for in the four, four pieces, pieces rather than going for the whole egg. In the entire egg. I don't know how much that would cost, like probably like 10 cents. I, I, have I don't know. No who would idea. Expect, or, or maybe. So I don't know who will take the shell, who will take the yolk. Uh, I, you know, the yolk is very healthy <laughs> for you, so I think you should go for that okay, if you want to do your egg sunny side up or whatever. <laughs> Right, but as you rightly mentioned, this comment came, and I have no idea what's the analogy behind it, but um, it, com it comes from the conversation that we have seen a high inflation rate in the yeah. country, and I feel that everybody really can attest to that. Um, we talked the other day about pigtail going to $8.75 now, you know, and, and, it, and, and we always mention pigtail because that's like a big thing for Belizeans to think that, man, I can no longer get that commodity as easy as I could before. So let's see how, <laughs> I don't know. I, let, us, let us know what are your comments on, on that video. But yeah, uh, what are your thoughts on it? I don't understand where he's coming from. Okay. So when you think about inflation, you think about the fact that prices are going up. Mm -hmm. And so you're trying, that means your income is now limited as to what you can buy as before. Right. And so now you're looking at something that costs $5 that used to cost maybe $2. And so in your mind, if it's split up, it's supposed to be less. So maybe that $5 thing when split up will be now $2. So just looking at that side that he's like, okay, if I split it up, maybe in your mind, like he's trying to say people are desperate in this manner right now. That way they would just want to split things up and just cut the cost in some way, shape, or form. Wasn't the best analogy in the world. Mind your dad. But <laughs> I get it. So <laughs> with that, we have wrapped up our couch conversation. Again, thank you so much, thank Kev, for too. sharing this story with me. It was, it was me. good bouncing <laughs> off these, these uh, recent happenings in, in Belize with you. Yeah, is there any, any last thing you would like to no, cover? No, I have a special big up, but I'm going to do it way for a wrap up. So, because I know okay. we have an interesting conversation coming up, and our guests, we respect their time and we yes. want to make sure they get on the couch. So, for all our viewers at home that's wondering who is next up, we have said it in the intro and we're saying it again. We have um, the director of projects from the Caribbean Development Bank here talking about the recent, recent, you know, inaugural visit. And what's happening on that scene, if you don't know anything about the Caribbean Development Bank, this is an important conversation that you can learn and see, you know, the past projects and also what are the opportunities and the benefits that the public and private can come together and get from this. So stay tuned for that exciting conversation. We'll be right back.